think of it yourself. Ask them to tell you. What's the function of that organ? Right there I knew, and I told you her mother died just a few months before. And her mother started changing right before she died. So she started seeing a different mother. Her mother had already left. I'll never be able to hold my mother again. So her hands. Who cooked for her? Who held her as a little girl? But if the root of the illness is a need, I don't know if I told you this, if not write it down, it is a need that that person is unable to fulfill in themselves. And that's very important. So when that woman says cooking and holding and hugging and loving, she is telling me her issue. I am unable to love myself. So I need to work on self-love with her. There is a need that the person cannot fulfill in themselves. And if we're looking, remember, if we're looking for the other person to fulfill the need, whether it's a thing or a person, we don't have self. We're not plugging in. So ask them, what's the function of your foot? What's the fun function of your big toe? See what's in their mind, because it's their mind creating that illness. And you can already say, oh, that's the need. Oh, my skin is so my husband can touch me or whatever it is, it's in the head. They don't feel worthy of being touched or they don't want to be touched. Maybe they're cheating on their husband and they created something in their body so that their husband doesn't touch them, right around the groin area. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Hello. to Rajas. We can't skip. We have to go in order. So what do we introduce? More activity. Okay. So activity. Mm -hmm. Fire. Mm -hmm. We need to put a fire under our Um Change their eating habits. Absolutely. So we want to maybe give them certain spices. You'll learn like pippoli or something that's, you know, active. Spark. <laughs> Spark it in all, in all orifices. <laughs> Absolutely, you want to give them, maybe that's someone that you want to give some chanting, but that's like higher emotion, not yeah. you know, so soft and slow, but something that's like, you know, Hare Krishna, yeah. I mean, something that's gonna you know, give them that fire element. I used to call that my disco. When I wanted to dance and, and you go to the Krishna temple. Oh, the best. The best. The best. Well, dancy. Oh, I don't know. You're like, oh, my sure. And you're like, woo! Yeah, that's great. I have my own Krishna temple in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Oh, oh, my God. Are you kidding? I'm like, me yeah. too. Right. Elation. And coconut grove. I just went to the house and whatever. And they are in my house. That's my good trip. For all the tamas. But when you see that in less tamas, you want to give them the fire, or you want to send them to something like that, or that kind of music, the movement. Yeah. So that's not some. Uh, we're not supposed to say that, but what you know, uh -huh. about yoga. From yoga, but um, you know, at least something, at least some sun salutations, some variations. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get them moving. You're not going to want them to be all calm. You know, so you have them do some movement. Um, you want to address when you're able. In a tamasic person, one of the major, major things is the attachment. So that homework that I gave you. Oh my God, it's so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I was there yesterday. I had to go to sleep together. I went to bed. You hit your phone. Wow. Well, that was one of the things. I was like, let me try a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> So you can give them some 
something like that. What can you detach from? Start small. Maybe it's their perfume. But get them to see that they're able to detach from something because there's a lot of attachment. Maybe they call their mother every single day. I do. Okay. I know she's a or whatever, but my mom is not a yadita. <laughs> <laughs> A shirt with like sparkles that says baby. <laughs> You're not going out like that. <laughs> well, okay. yeah. So right there you see, I am not my mother. So I go the other extreme. I'm not even the name. Baby. <laughs> Mom, where are you going with that? You don't know that. <laughs> baby, really? <laughs> so it's like my mom. And then she goes, don't you dare go around telling your age because then people are going to figure out how old I am. Is she a Gemini by any chance? She's Cleo. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's so funny. She oh. happy at 16, so she, you know, she's only 16 years older than me. Oh, but still, good, she's good. like always have to call and make the appointment for her nails and. <laughs> So there, I'll just get into you. your psyche for a second. Part of that could have been that you were like the mother to your mother growing up. Probably. Home. And so there that. is a thing there of. I'm the mother, I had to grow up so this person can stay young, infantile, mature, or whatnot. So you can see. <laughs> and I have one of those. <laughs> My mother's the same. When I was studying like the dietary patterns and what it says about your psyche, who, not because of Ayurveda, but who just doesn't like milk or had an allergic to milk or cheese? Um, I, like milk, I like used to not like milk. But now that I've had raw milk, I like it. So I think I just didn't like the nice way milk. Okay, is. so there, okay, but we're looking at the psychology. So she didn't like milk. Milk is the mother. Well, my mom made me stop breastfeeding very young, too. Okay, so there's usually something to do with that, but the raw. And her mother, just because I know, in her rawest way, in her true way, before dad, you like that person. <laughs> well, my mom? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't like milk. I have zero interest in milk drinking. And I'm a Cuban person who grew up cafe con leche every day. My mother and my sister to this day, this is what they drink every day. I don't. But I love aged cheese because I wanted a mature milk. I miss cheese. So I was in a class once and we were talking about this. Oh my god, it was so funny. It was this Cuban woman. And Cuban, you know, we're very like, I don't know. And the woman was like, she would grate on your nerves. Seriously, that was the perfect thing. So we're talking about these things. And she goes to the teacher, what does it mean that my daughter doesn't like Parmesan cheese grated but from the green thing? Right. The we all knew. Because <laughs> honey, you grate. If milk and cheese is the mother, and you're, you're grating. grating. Lord knows that you grate on her nerves. So the teacher's like, oh, I don't know. You'll have to <laughs> What does it mean when you love pizza? Everybody <laughs> loves pizza. <laughs> My husband, that's his addiction breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Really? Yeah. But there is a cheese component there. I love cheese. So I maybe your so mom like was it warm? Was it melty? She was. was it, if she was what, 16. She was very young. I call. I what could she young. give you? It's the 16. person who raised me was my grandmother, actually. And my great. I grew up with my mom. My grandmother and my great grandmother, who oh. taught me, she was Taino Indian, so she taught me all the oh, herbs yeah. and the. That's oh. amazing. Oh. I love her. So, so it's, there's and some warmth and, and yeah. melted heart needed there. You know, my mom was, I mean, she was a child herself. Okay. So then she's a very mature and adult, and mom still 
So the patterns are there. Now if we go to karma, it may have been that you were the mother at that lifetime and that you brought in that samskara, or vice versa, or there was an issue that had to be worked out. We can go on and on and on deeper, deeper, sure. deeper. But if you just look at that one thing, you already have the story. It's not that hard when we really break it down. Now you guys are never going to want to talk to me again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in that mode 24 7, but you know. Um, yeah, you are. <laughs> no, not always. I just uh, you know, my kids, talk to you all the time. Hi, with hi. my kids, my daughter. My daughter loves it though. She's just like me. She's, She's like always so analyzing all her friends and telling them the spiritual significance of everything. Mom, what is the toe on the right and the this and that? You know? <laughs> She's too funny. So we need to get them to change. We need to get them to move when they're tamasic to rajasic. And you want to get, that's probably a person who's in total delusion that doesn't want to acknowledge anything from the past. This is the hoarders. You see with the hoarders that they can't let go of it, right? You can do some inquiry or ask them to journal. I'm a big person in journaling. I give a lot of journaling activities to clients. Um, I'll bring for next class in the chakra class that I teach. For each chakra, I have a list of journal mm -hmm. questions. I'll bring those for you guys. So that you have, like when you notice someone that has a certain chakra disorder or issue, you can give them that sort of stuff and in for yourself. Um, so you want any sort of movement. Again, mind, body, spirit. If it's food, if it's the herbs, if it's a spiritual practice. So you get give that fire element in any way possible. But the depression or the attachment and that's what you want to start having them think about or write about. So even if it's the smallest thing. Okay. From rajasic to sattvic, you need to create space, the element of space. So these are people that have big egos tendency. There's a, a motivation or a strong will. So you want to give them something beyond themselves, beyond the ego, beyond the I to work with. Maybe you have them donate to a charity. That's one of the questions. Donate to the charity and don't say who it is. That's creating space somewhere. Of course, you're going to give the yoga, you're going to give the pranayama, you're going to give the food, the herbs. This is all of it. This is just sort of that mental part of it. So you want to introduce the element of, of Akash here so that there's space created. These are people that very get much attached to blaming others. One question, what part did you have in the story? Or where are you just like that person? Where in your life are you just like this person? Which is what I had you guys look at yesterday, which your faces said it all. We don't want to see that. But when we're taking someone from Rajas to Sattva, we want to bring them to that. And service is a big component there. And most of these people you're going to see, they're going to be active. All their time is spent on themselves. I have to work out. I have to make money. I have to take care of my kids. Yes, they're multitasking and busy, 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 but what are you doing outside of the I? So give them one thing to do outside of I. So that's why I say about the charity. Or go pull weeds. Or go give your neighbor babysitting help. Something, we have to break it. Remember, we're moving to that is, to the plus, just baby steps at a time. And then if we're sattvic already, we want to get to even more sattva, really transcending sattva. And what we're doing is really working at the universal level, really working at humanity level. And of course, <coughs> a development of community or spiritual community spiritual practices that are even deeper. And I have a note here about the psychology from when you're moving from sattva to pure sattva or transcending sattva. The seeking is to develop joy, not to overcome pain. And that's really interesting. Because if we're here as a manifestation of God, and God is joy, and God is harmony, and God is bliss, then we, when we change our mindset that we're here not to, all of us are trying to overcome pain. It's what we're trying to do. 
But when you transcend that, all you're trying to do is find the joy, live in the joy, not overcoming pain. That's that's when you've reached that level. You've transcended that. So let's talk about the reboots. R-I-P-U-S. These are enemies of the market. You guys want to have class next weekend? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can talk about this all day. The reboots. I'm to the outro. I do. I want to have class. These are the enemies of the mind. Are those like the seven? Like the seven deadly sins. Same, same, same concept, yes. Okay. So first of all, what they do is they create disturbance in the mind. They create rajas or tamas. So if we have a disturbance in the mind, are we going to have a physical manifestation of it eventually? Yes. We know viadi, we're eventually going to, if it's there for a long enough time, it will manifest physical. So you know that when someone tells you, I have this fungus on my toe two days ago, that that's been festering in the mind? Okay, so that's important to see. They create rajas. And Thomas. And they disturb Sattva. And they create imbalance. This is the part of us that we don't want to see. This is where we feel we're better than other people. And we all have that. I'm not like that person. So I had a client the other day. And she and I are quite similar. I guess in one way or the other, I'm like all my clients because they're coming to me. And the whole thing, we're doing astrology. We're talking about the materiality of things, money. I'm not a person that concerns myself with money. I told you I'm a glutton. I've got abundance in everything in my life, thankfully. But in other areas, I don't have that abundance because that's the whole thing on the other side of the coin, right? So we're talking about the not being attached to money. And so it doesn't matter that because that's where we put ourselves. The, the self-righteous ego tells you you're better than this person. Because that person cares about having fancy cars or fancy clothes and a lot of money in the bank. And I'm better because I'm not like her. So this is the conversation we were having. I said, I am not attached to financial, but I'm attached to my children. I am attached to my values. I am attached to my parents. I'm attached to my childhood story. I'm attached to so much. And so when we remember that everything is trickling down into a dense, dense, dense form. There was a subtle form of that earlier. So even though it's knowledge, it's a subtle form of money, per se. Same thing, going back to your homework assignment, why is money not bad? Money is not bad because it's simply a solid a panchamahabhuta, a, 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 a paper, the prithvi, but where does it come from? It comes from the same place everything else comes from, Purusha. So nothing is bad in that respect. So when we become self-righteous and we're not like the other person, the minute that you put that distinction, you have to see where you are like them. And so we were, we were having that conversation about that. It's like, don't say that you're not attached. You're not attached to money, but what are you attached to? Ask yourself the right question because we're ultimately all attached to something. That's why we're here. We're attached to this freaking damn body. Of course we're attached. So these elements, these, uh, these enemies, create also 
friction between one another. But the key is we have them all. That's the beauty of astrology, and I was telling you this yesterday. Everybody has a Neptune. Neptune is the planet of delusion, one of them. Everybody has Mars. Mars is a planet of anger. We all have it. It's one of the reasons. So we all have these. What we're trying to do is if we're in the body, we have them. What we're trying to do is transcend that. We're trying to go past that. But by virtue of being in the body, we have it. It goes with territory. Okay. Everyone have this? So first is, and everybody knows this, comma, lust desire and desire. She's so hot. I want her to be mine. <laughs> <laughs> we lust after the plants on the prana.com website. I was lusting. Salivation. <laughs> <laughs> I was like the hyenas in the, in the Lion King. <laughs> saying in Spanish, in English I think it's still waters run deep maybe, um, I don't know if that's the translation, in Spanish, de la jagua mansa, <laughs> from still waters comes, mm -hmm. woof, the rapids, with me you know what you're going to get, I'm loud, I'm crazy, I'm <laughs> excited, I'm this. this is it, there are no calm waters here, <laughs> but when it's so calm, be careful. Anger. Anger, I don't consider personally anger an emotion. Because emotions, one of the qualities that emotions have is that when you talk about an emotion, it gets calmer. Anger, no. The more you talk about anger, it gets rage and more and more and more. What my impression, this is just my opinion, is under anger is hurt and disappointment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if you peel that layer and you really ask yourself, who am I angry at for what, what need was it met? It's often you for what you didn't do. And I'm hurt and disappointed in my father because he didn't take me to the baseball game when I was three years old. So that's my opinion of it. But anger, we all have anger. Every single one of us. And if you suppress your anger, watch out. You're going to have rashes, you're going to have a heart attack, you're going to have migraines. Anyone get migraines? Me. Yeah. Anger, mama. <laughs> Start writing. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, just me, and I'll just bring tissue. <laughs> And nobody has this. None of us. Greed. To me, this is like hearing this. So when you get cringy like that, I have to look at this. Where is it? It might be from a past life. It might be something from childhood. But we have to look at where am I greedy? So if I'm a glutton, I have to be greedy. Because if I'm so much abundance, that means I'm taking from someone else. In some capacity. We have to look at both sides. We have to. Moha. Delusion. Attachment. And temptation. Delusion is the major one. Those go with that. And most people in this field of ours are all deluded. How, what is the quintessential archetype on TV? Does anyone watch Family, the funny show with yeah. Gar Vergara? Mm -hmm. What? Oh, but Modern Family. Modern Family. Anyone watch that? Yes. The mother, 
That's not in the show. She only comes for. Oh yeah, yeah, How do they depict spiritual people on TV? Like they're crazy. Crazy. (laughs) And you shock her, and they all wear long spirits, and we're all hippie granola. Because none of us live in the world. We're not stepping on the floor, people. We're all hippie. Six chakra on the bird. (laughs) Delusion. (laughs) We are. Because if it were me, the body would be there and I would visit it and give it a little food and all day. You and I have nothing to do with each other. I'm over here and you're over there. First chakra. Because I want to be. And that's how we're depicted in the media. Mm-hmm. Watch that show. Shelly Shelley Long, I think is her her name. Her actress name has the perfect example. And it's Sedona. And I'm wearing crystals. Yeah. So no, all of us have to do more grounding than anybody else out there. Yes. <laughs> when I go visit my family, my brother, her, uh, my sister and all the kids, my mother, her family, like the immediate family, they have a nickname for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here comes Gandhi. <laughs> The only disease is disease is out of balance. If you're not, if my guide said that my body is the fl- is the vase and my spirit is the flowers. The flowers die without the vase. The vase has no function without the spirit. So I have to get grounded. You have to be grounded. I can help nobody living out of this this space because then I'm not really here. And then I'm not experience what I came to experience. But it's very, very common. And when you find people that are so, it's the vata. You need to ground those people. And we, our community, are, we're the most deranged. <laughs> before any client is ground. The first thing I have to do when a client leaves is ground. Because I literally leave my body and enter my client's body. That's what this work that I do does. That's why I can feel your physical pain. I had a woman the other day, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. She's like, I just had my gallbladder bladder removed. I'm like, oh my God, I was dying. I was at my altar lighting the candle, dying in pain. I'm like, what is this, what is this? It's funny that you say that when I do massages, that happens to me a lot. You are entering their energy energy work. Yes. Or hyper. Totally. That's why you are reading them. And you get all that. If you don't ground, you are going to go home and have that. And you have to go. You've got to cleanse that and give people back what they came with. I mean, that's just the nature of what we do. It's beautiful. But the one of the reasons why most healers are so vada deranged is because they're not doing their own inner work. We heal, but we don't heal ourselves. And if you're not in your reality of what is going on in your own life, you are delusional. And how do you ground yourself? I ground myself with holistic mainly. I ground myself mainly by doing my work. 
let's be real. I journal every day, I talk to my inner child every day, I'm constantly like trying to live in this body. And I have a love-hate relationship with my body because I'm a Pisces and my whole myth is that I'm not of this body. But I am, temporarily. So that's my main grounding. But I use holy stick before, during, I live with holy stick. That's like my main thing. I of course go outside every day. I've got now got my animal. That helps. I have all four elements in my room when I work. I have all four at all times. So it's grounding the spirit. So there's a lot of things. But you have to. Because if not, then you're totally delusional. And it happens to be that our field, Moha, so close to Moksha, but not him. <laughs> Matsarya. Jealousy and envy. No one likes to think that they have jealousy and envy, but we do. This is very scorpionic. Wherever we have Scorpio in our chart, wherever we have Pluto in our chart, that's why we all have this. There isn't any of us that doesn't have these planets in our chart. Now, when you have a planet, like for instance, I have my moon in Cancer. She has her moon in Capricorn. Her manifestation of her attachment is going to be Capricornian. Mine is going to be Cancerian. But the planet tells me the attachment. The sign tells me how that person attaches. My Mars is in Capricorn. My ego, or my ambition, is channeled through a Capricorn lens. Yours might be in Gemini, but you still have it. So for us to believe that we're different than anyone else is the first delusion. We have these things. Now, based on our samskaras, based on our past lives, based on the work we've already done, we'll see how quantity it is. I'm not a jealous, envious person. That's just not my nature. I've obviously worked at it. Doesn't mean I don't have it at all. I wanted to repent it yesterday. <laughs> it is an example. We all have rachos. How do you say rachos? Like threads of that. But we may have worked something really, really, really well in a lifetime that it's just in passing. And mala. Well, also, don't you, like, when you're observing your thoughts, if you're observing these things bubbling up, you recognize it, you recognize it as not yourself. You're kind of transmuting exactly. it. Exactly. And rather than just saying, like, oh, I felt it, but then ignoring it, like, recognizing it, noticing you feel it, recognizing it as not your true nature. And right. At that moment, when you can transcend that, and say, that is not me, that is not my true nature, and that's why we say, it's the observer. Okay, the observer is the spirits, the purusha. When we identify with the observer, that we think we're the observer, we think we're the person, then we're not. But that's a perfect example. So, I am observing that I have that tendency. The delusion would be, I don't have to work it. I'm still in the body, I have to work it. At that moment of meditation, you don't want to take it and thread it. But you know, mental know, I, that's one of the things I need to work on. But yes, observe your thought and you'll see that all of this comes up and you don't want to like hold on to it. Just kind of, like we said yesterday, the bear, the postal stamp, the current thing. Same thing. But yes, we're not any of it, but we're all of it. Okay. Oh, it's lunchtime. Okay. So let's break for lunch. <coughs> and <laughs> oh, no, it's like, can we keep going? <laughs> let's break for lunch, and then we will talk about the bodies, and we'll do a little activity, um, and we'll go into the koshas, and then we'll be done for the day. And then next week we'll do the nadis and the shakas. 
Awesome. What do you call it? Yoni, Yoni Mudra. Mudra. Okay. Awesome. Yoni Mudra. Let me just take the bit away. 